Ricky Bobby's probably yeah. isn't saving their lives, isn't bringing them together for this moment. Yeah, I think it's the I carry a big stick. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> yeah. I think that's the line that that makes it the one. Because you think he's going to fight a shark with a big stick. You just think that's where he's going with this, and I'm here for it. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> could could it be considered that he's talking about something else? Because... No, like a shepherd, right? You know, shepherds with their sticks. They're you know they're yeah, walking sticks. That they used to fight sharks with. <laughs> or Donnie Yen from Rogue One with his stick. Maybe he's referring to that. The shepherd's crook is for fighting sharks. The main reason for that. <laughs> and pulling people off stage. <laughs> yes, second use. <laughs> well, we know these sharks can partially jump on land to get something they want. In this case, Samuel L. Jackson, right? It kind of does that and mm-hmm. falls back. So sheep are not immune from sharks. No. True. I mean, no. that's just, that's just uh, you know, canon at this point. This is another <laughs> Jurassic Park reference of the T-Rex and the goat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same film. That's it. Yes, yeah, that'd be Jurassic terrifying. Park, you guys talked about how this is basically Jurassic Park. Yes. Oh yeah, okay. several you times. <laughs> and then we've also did, talked about I didn't bring it up, but like it is Jurassic Park. But yeah. we've talked about how the Lost uh, Jurassic Park, the Lost World. No, wait, Jurassic World, Jurassic World. is the blue sea. Because mm. they're just modifying the, the dinosaurs. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is exactly the blue sea. So it's, it's like I love that Rennie Harlan knocked off Jurassic Park and you know. Uh, jaws and certain elements, and then Jurassic World became Deep Blue Sea. And Full deep, circle. Deep yeah, Blue Sea is superior to both of them because it has no children in it. Therefore, it's a better film. Wait, Jurassic Park has pretty good kids. Hey. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> wait, wait a second, Jay. Wait a <laughs> second, Jay. Jay, are you saying Deep Blue Sea is better than Jurassic Park? I'm not. I, I just, the, I, the lack okay, of kids is better than the kids in Jurassic Park. It, but it sounded a lot like that's what you were saying, it and did, our it? friendship was about to end. Yeah. I like them both. Friendships Whoa. would end over that? I mean, Whoa. well, I'll put it this way. Now, here's why. I can, I can give reasoning for this. The reasoning here is that is what our friendship is founded on. Yes, it is. That's true. It's, 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 it's oh, Jurassic Park God. and Back to the Future, I think, are the two things that it's founded on. <laughs> okay. Wait, no. I need an answer. I, I, Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park is, is a better film, but I, I, I would like it more if it had less kids in it, fewer kids in it. And I would like Deeply Sea less if it had kids in it. So 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 wait, I have to. I need some clarification. There is the kid. You don't you don't like the kids in in peril. I don't like kids. <laughs> but the kids in Jurassic Park are good. They get sneezed on. They have kitchen so wait, fights. If the kids in Jurassic Park had been eaten by dinosaurs, would that make it better or worse? It's uh, it's hard to say, uh, <laughs> but it's it's not definitive. The, I mean, the worst part about the Lost World is the 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 kid doesn't get eaten when she's fighting Velociraptors. That would that would. <laughs> been a far well, superior film as she'd been taken out the reason for that is because velociraptors were never trained to react to gymnastics so That's there true. was no way for them to fight back yeah until so. jurassic world okay what happens if rennie harlan directs jurassic park and steven spielberg directs deep lucy he put kids in deep lucy so we have <laughs> jaws so we'd like i think <laughs> rennie harlan would it would be snowing in his version of jurassic park yeah, i mean be, cliffhanger well, die hard 2 he jurassic loves snow world is set at christmas what? Jurassic World is technically a Christmas film. It is set over the Christmas period. It's not discussed as much as it should be, but technically Jurassic World is a Christmas film. So if Rennie Harlan were to direct Jurassic Park, you would have Jurassic World. I think. Mm-mm. <laughs> 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 does, does not compute. <laughs> it would be R-rated. Uh, it would have Gina Davis with amnesia <laughs> in the oh, snow, goodness. ice skating, a G- Gina Davis on a lake being chased by raptors, who are slipping and sliding on the ice. Holy crap. Imagine that in a trailer. A raptor on a on a snowmobile. Yep, okay. <laughs> Freddy Krueger's see. in there somewhere. Explosions. Very literal title. I mean, cliffhanger, come on. <laughs> what we'll just need, like, dinosaur attack? LL Cool J in there. And Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, yeah. still dying. The Sam Jackson role yeah. is unchanged. Well, it maybe gets more to do. LL Cool J, LL Cool J. LL Cool J is Goldblum? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's Carter Blake? I mean, he's, I mean he's, got, he's the hero of the film, he's, so he's got to be Sam Neill. Dr. He's, Grant. He's Dr. Grant, yeah. yeah. Gina Davis is, is Ellie. Lord Does he Dern. get the hat? Lord Dern. Yeah. Can you wear his hat from The Expanse? Yeah, he has the hat, but no shoes. Hat, no shoes. I see it. So wait, LL Cool J was Goldblum? Was that, was that correct? Yeah. Why not? 
okay. So Carter uh, says in this chapter that they're going to distract the sharks with fire extinguishers and life life jackets because the sharks like bright colours and <laughs> thrashing <laughs> motions. And this is correct. We have uh, a bit of shark trivia that's actually right uh, in in the film. So they do like bright colours. That is true. I was sharks are them. technically colourblind, but they can see contrast. They can okay. see in like black and white, so so the, so, so the bright color is going to stick out yeah. to them. So bright nice. colors against a murky background would work. So that so it's the same way that, reason that we have like bright orange or bright yellow flotation devices, so that you can see them against the murky water. Those kind right. of things also do tend to attract sharks. <laughs> um, <it's> just, <laughs> <laughs> but catch twenty two maybe yes. a little bit. But the uh, I think it's more important to the people on the boat to be able to see the person they're trying to save than the lesser likelihood of a shark seeing them. And the thrashing round tends to look like prey. Sharks are attracted to it was like a, a different kind, a, an unusual creature's movement in the water. If it's something they haven't seen before. They're going to go inspect it and maybe give it a try. And so they probably haven't seen fire extinguishers spinning around underwater before. That would be unusual. So. It's in a future chapter, but what happens next week does make sense. When the so my question extinguisher. about the life jackets, couldn't they just shoot the fire extinguisher off into the water and it have the same effect? Like, the the, the churning of the water is still going to attract them, right? Could, Technically, yes, it... but I think the, the bright color is just a, a, another added bonus. And as, right. as Carter says, you don't want to be wearing the life jacket because it takes you up too quickly and you would die. Okay, so they don't pressure. need the life jacket, yeah. so they can use them for this purpose as well. Yeah, because you want to... They say they're about 60 feet deep. I have never scuba dived to this depth or any depth, but just some brief research would suggest you want to take about one to two minutes to get to the surface from that depth. Uh, oh, pre- wow. Exhaling. You should you should try and swim up at the same speed as the smallest bubbles of air that you exhale, apparently. <laughs> as if that's going to be in anywhere near your thought process right. as you're ev- as yeah. you're evading demon sharks. Okay. Yes. I have to go slow. I have to avoid the shark, shark very slowly. <laughs> Yeah, have have you guys seen Forty Seven Meters Down? Not uh, yet. That that film, that shark film. I have not seen that. Oh, there's a scene where they have to wait below the surface because they'll get the bends if they don't go up too quick. And there's a flare gag in that that'll change your life. So you need to watch that movie. All right. It's good. I, I tend I tend to stay away from movies that pin me underwater, <laughs> which which is odd that I then very much enjoyed this year's so called underwater but oh, uh, yeah, you're the one. I, I yeah yeah i am <laughs> <laughs> but no i i have i avoid most movies that feature people underwater it's just one of those one of those things you get under you get scared it's scary Fair underwater enough. is the ultimate one of those i know well but yeah they're not just yeah I, I was secretly hoping it was a cloverfield sequel that was oh. that, that was actually Going in, that was my theory. It was not, but it, it was. Oh, spoiler! It's not. But like that was that was my running hope with that movie. So that's why I braved it. Got it. Okay, would have been better than the last one. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Actually, I think under I think underwater is worse than the Cloverfield Paradox. Oh wow! Now about these fish. So we've kind of talked about it on the show. These these fish were present. Demon in the fish. And they were captured. They're experimented on. There's animal brain stabbing practice going on. They are trapped. They're they're eating other sharks. They just want to escape. They know, like they escaped in the beginning. They caught them. There's probably a tracking chip. They they don't want this research getting out. That's why they they tried to attack her in there. These are prisoners. And so when when preacher called them demon fish, I was a little taken back because these are just sharks trying to get out. But also preacher doesn't know all the stuff McAllister has done. He do, like, he's just the he was just kind of the the chef. And he was then attacked by him. So when he calls them demon fish, I'm like, yeah, I get it. Like, if, Mac- if McAllister calls them demon fish, I don't like it. But if he does, I'm all for it. Yeah, she did it to it. Like, she caused them to be demon fish. It's yeah. her doing. That's, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, I totally agree. I, I love her. I mean, kind of spoiler, and I'm sure you guys will get into it in a few weeks, but her death scene is, is amazing. It's just because it's great. She deserves all of it. Yeah. Those teeth are great looking, aren't they? Yeah, just, they just come down. <laughs> that was terrifying. I oh, feel man. bad for the person who is watching every scene with you as the show goes along and does not know that she dies yet and just got it spoiled by Pete. I think we've spoiled it at a previous <laughs> yeah. chapter. It's, it's also a 20-year-old movie, man. Come on. 
I think I said that in the first episode. I just yeah. wanted to wreck it for everybody. Oh, what if there's somebody out there who's only seen that original cut where she survives? And they're like, oh, I love that cut. I'm going to listen to this podcast. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the original cut, Preacher dies and, and Su- uh, Dr. Zuzi uh, survives. Is that true? Yeah. And then the audiences hated it. Cause that, cause, yeah, because it's a mistake. Because so audience is like, no, what are you doing? You killed the best character and yet the villain yeah. survive. What's going on here? Uh, and there's a so was of- it was it when... Um, Preacher's being like, kind of dragged along as he was. Does he die there? Yeah, pretty, yeah, we think so. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. they reshot a lot of the ending stuff. Like the the final shot of them on the on the floating uh, platform, Saffron yeah. Burrows was in that shot, and they digitally removed her. Oh so. wow! <laughs> Wait, but then Preacher would have been digitally inserted. Yeah, I'm not sure how many endings they shot. Uh, if Preacher's, have, I, I I wasn't quite clear on that because it sounded like he wouldn't have been in there. But I, I'm not clear on that. This is yeah. We'll need to we'll dig into that in future weeks, I think, to try and work out mm-hmm. get to the bottom of that. There's a stock photo of McAllister and Carter kissing too. So they must have consummated their relationship before there's like a twelve minute love scene in it. Yeah. Before the shark attack. There's a very reluctant <laughs> uh hand grasping between Carter and Susan here. When when Preacher's starting the prayer and he holds his hands out and the other two Carter and Susan hold them. Then Carter holds his hand up for Susan, and there's this, there's a pause as she's like debating whether to hold his hand or not. And I couldn't. I know there's like history between these two, but it's always been a, like he's the one who's been more reluctant to befriend her because she's the Doctor Frankenstein megalomaniac of the mm-hmm. film, and he's the hero. So he's holding the hand out, and she's like, ah, what, do I, what do I what do I do? And then she goes, I don't know. It's it's I find it odd. So I I kind of saw that. It's interesting that you brought that up because I, I thought about exactly that too. I thought maybe that she's like a doctor and a person of science and is hesitant to like buy into the religious stuff. I don't know. Maybe that's thinking too much about it, but like, you know, it seems like that's a common thing. Like doctors kind of tend to, yeah. you know, deal in, deal in fact more so than faith. And they, I don't know. Maybe she was just didn't, didn't want to buy in so easily, but I guess that's, that's the time to buy in right there. If you're going to, there should have been a five-minute conversation about that. Like, preacher, I'm a scientist. I don't believe in this. Just, just an existential, like... Uh... <laughs> well, religion versus science is a is a running thread through the film. I mean, in a future chapter, we have a character called Preacher stabbing a scientifically modified shark with a crucifix. Right. It's not subtle. Uh, so... <laughs> It was, I was thinking, too, it's possible she was put off by the idea that he never went to class, as he says. <laughs> Wait, I respected school. Yeah, and maybe she's just like, but I don't know if I can take your hand right now because of that. You never did oh. your homework. Yeah. I mean, be, it becomes like a James L. Brooks moment for, like, you know, just the two, three of them arguing for 25 minutes. <laughs> that would have been if the water, let, like, let's say, okay, so uh, Carter spins the thing, right? And the water starts coming in. But instead of it rushing in like it does, it's more like a drip, drip. And so then it takes that long to get up to the top. And that's when they have this whole conversation. I, I see it. Yeah. Yeah, he does the, the the huge prayer, but then water's just dripping in. They're like, oh, well, what do we got next? Yeah. What? That's why he's out living uh, the it's, prayer. It's, cause it's, <laughs> it's before the prayer. I think it's before the prayer because they have to, he's about ah. to pray. And then she stops him. She's like, no, I'm not taking your hand because I, I, I don't, I don't adhere to this. I won't, I don't do any religion stuff. I'm all science. And then preacher, of course, gets offended and Carter has to be the mediator between them. And again, water just kind of slowly moving through the room and, and they're just kind of gradually moving up. I see it. Well, I mean, Carter said that it would take a few seconds for the room to fill. To me, a few is like three, three to five. Yes. It takes 58 <laughs> seconds for this room to fill. It takes practically a minute. So I think Preacher starts his prayer thinking he's not going to get to the end of it. That's why oh. he ad-libs, because he doesn't know oh, the end. That, he has to I make it up. It. He's forgotten yes. it. And <laughs> I, I, I tried to work out... This is a bit intimidating to have a, a math teacher on the podcast today, Justin. Uh, but Former. I tried, I, sorry? I, yeah, well, okay, you have the qualification. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and so I tried to work out the, the maths behind the filling of the room. It looks like it's about a nine-foot cube room. So that would take about it's about 255 litres of water, about 56 gallons. I did all of this in metric, I apologise. Um, I was going to ask, I was like, well, this is going to all be for naught, because <laughs> if you guys using it, I'll admit, a superior system, that's fine. Thank you. Well, I, I did. I converted where possible. So about 25 okay. litres, about 56 gallons. Takes about a minute. There looks like there's nine inlets around the room, each one, I guess, about a 10 centimetre diameter, so about a four inch diameter. 
uh, which worked out a water velocity of six centimeters a second, or two two point four inches per second, uh, which is fine. I compared that to my hose pipe. I went outside and I filled up a, a liter 